It's been almost exactly a year from when Dead Side first released on April 14th, and since that point the game has improved by leaps and bounds. Many exploits such as item and money duplication have been fixed. The netcode isn't perfect all the time, but it feels like a completely different game compared to release. The amount of content and improvements they have added over this year alone shows the potential that this game has, and how hard the extremely small development team is working to get this game to where it needs to be. But we all know this game still has a long way to go. Many planned features are yet to be seen, like vehicles, suppressors, advanced AI, clan systems, the list goes on. The game still very much feels like an early in development game, and because, well, it is. Deadside still hasn't officially made it out of the alpha stage. Even so, the game has still gotten a relatively small devoted community, my channel being the pretty good example of that. We want to see the game be successful, so we talk about all of its problems. We tear the game down, so the devs can build it back up better than before. That's our job as early testers. But now I want to go deeper, ignoring issues with bugs and content inside of the game. I want to talk about the fundamental core issues that the game has, specifically Deadside's core gameplay loop. Or rather, it's a gameplay loop break. But first, I need to explain what a gameplay loop is, and it's essentially what the player will be doing while playing the game. Having a good core gameplay loop is the most important part of designing a good game, because it essentially is the whole player experience. So if you have an engaging and fun core gameplay loop, you will keep the players engaged and having fun as a result. You want players to be able to be continuously engaged in the gameplay loop. That's why it's called a loop in the first place. The issue with Dead Side though is that the gameplay loop eventually breaks, or rather, runs into a wall of sorts. But like I said earlier, the game is an early alpha and to expect it to have a complete and polished core gameplay loop when the game is missing so many features is a bit absurd. The reason I'm even making this video is because I think it's extremely important for the future of the game that the current issues are understood and solved in the correct way. So in order to understand the problems of Deadside's core gameplay loop, let's take a look at the loop itself. So first, you spawn in. Then get some basic gear like clothes, a gun, some healing. Next you explore some areas, maybe do some events like missions, helis, cargo drops, and do some PvP and PvE. All for better money and gear. Then when you're done with that, you go store some gear for later. This could be back at the traders or back at your base. Then you go back to step 3 until you die, which then you'd start from step 1. There is also an optional step of building a base, but really the only reason you'd want to make one is if you want more storage. The objective of the player while engaging in the gameplay loop is to find and store lots of better gear. The reason for that is so that the player can use the full arsenal that the game has to offer, from weapons to scopes and armor, and for a gear advantage to boost survival rate in PvP and PvE. This model isn't perfect, but I think it's the most simple that encompasses almost everything you'll be doing while playing Deadside. The game's core gameplay loop is pretty damn good overall, and when you hear people say that Deadside is very good core gameplay despite not having very much content, this is probably what they mean. The only issue though is that the loop eventually hits a wall. The problem is, is that there only is so much content in the game, like map locations and weapons to collect, and you only have a limited amount of storage you can store the gear in three big crates and three small crates in your base, and one crate at each trader. Eventually, you will run out of stuff to do that you haven't already done before, and you reach a point where there is no point in doing step three of the gameplay loop, because you already have the best gear, and you have run out of storage to put any more in. This is the loop break that I was talking about. This is bad because it means the player no longer has an objective in the game, and playing the game as they typically would stops becoming rewarding. When this happens, it leaves a void where the player now has to come up with their own objectives, like community server events, or challenging themselves by using bad weapons and gear. But eventually, the average player will get bored or burnt out, and stop playing, either permanently, or until there is a new update. Because updates add new gear to the game, the objective of getting and storing lots of better gear becomes viable again, and as a result, the gameplay loop becomes rewarding again. This is why you see big spikes in the player count when there is an update, and also why player count drops so drastically in periods of no updates. So how do we fix this? Well, the issue can't be solved with the content we have in game. It's gonna take some new mechanics that change how the game is played drastically. 
there are two mechanics that I'd like to talk about here, and the first one is something that I came up with myself, and it's not something that is planned or really necessarily required, but it would function as a means to slow down the overall gameplay loop and separate it out into more distinct and separate sections. My idea is a progression system through the in-game traders. How this would function is that first, you would have to unlock the majority of the items that the trader sells with money. Some basic items are available from the start though. That would be like pistols, food, some basic clothing, some ammo types, and building equipment since you will only probably buy most building equipment once anyways. Everything else, however, would have to be unlocked with money for five times the cost of the item. I would like to see the ability to purchase more storage for your base from the traders. For every storage crate you have, the next one becomes a lot more expensive. So let's say it costs 100k more each time, with your first crate costing 300k. Both of these mechanics add a huge gear and money sink into the early and late game of Deadside, and the expansion of the amount of storage to theoretically infinite means you can always store as much gear as you like. This helps solve the issue where limited storage can impede your ability to engage in the core gameplay loop because you simply can't store any more gear. These two mechanics on their own do not completely solve the issue though. Having unlimited amount of storage helps, but players will still burn out eventually farming gear that they already have. The only way you can solve this is some sort of mechanic that removes the gear from players' base crates, and the perfect mechanic to do that is base rating. That way, the gear inside of the player crates are now going to be able to circulate between players and eventually find its way to one of the new two gear sinks. Now I know base rating is a planned feature that is going to be added, and that's good, but I think it's really important though that a few things about base rating are implemented in a specific way so that it functions correctly. First, the materials of base rating shouldn't be acquired through money. That way it isn't too easy for players with lots of money just to raid all the time and never go out in the world to at least get materials. Getting the materials for base rating should be pretty difficult though. For example, if explosives are going to be used, the only way to get those explosives are to take them out of the rocket tubes of crashed helicopters at the heli events. And even then, it should be pretty rare for the explosive to actually be there in the first place. In any case, the materials for base rating need to be rare, difficult to acquire, and only spawn in the world in high-risk, high-loot areas to prevent base rating from becoming too easy and too cheap. I've also seen people talk about online-only rating, and I think it's possible and a good idea if done correctly, but I think I'll leave that for another video. These mechanics combined with other new features that we know are planned, such as vehicles, will add an interesting dynamic to the game. It will no longer just be about getting gear, but it will also be about protecting the gear and base that you already have in order to stay competitive in PvP and the server overall. It's not perfect though, you will still eventually get to a point where players will all have the same really good stored gear in their trader, and they will also have most of the gear unlocked with plenty of money to get more. But because things like vehicles and probably other features that we don't know yet, like maybe some sort of farming or industry around bases, just having some money and gear won't be the most important thing. Plus, that issue can be solved by scheduled server wipes, which Pretty much every other survival shooter does because of this exact same problem. So, with these new features in mind, let's apply them to the core gameplay loop model to see what my ideal future Deadside would perform like compared to the one we already have, and see if it solves the major issues. Because of the trader progression system and base rating being more of an endgame activity, we can break the gameplay loop up into three different sections based on how far the player has progressed. First, we have the early gameplay loop which begins when you spot in for the first time. From there, you get some basic gear, then explore areas and do events in order to PvP or PvE for better gear and money. Then, you would go back to store some essential gear for later, and start to unlock better gear with money that you earned. Then, you would go back to step 3, until you have unlocked and stored some better gear. The early gameplay loop is focused mainly on getting established and getting some basic gear and money, so that you can get easier access to mid and high tier loot after you die. When you start to work on a base, you start to transition into the mid game loop, which functions like this. First, you spawn and go to your stored gear. Then you get a loadout, explore areas, do events, and PvP or PvE for specifically high tier gear, and more money. Then you use the earnings to upgrade your base or purchase more gear that you need to start becoming more competitive in PvP. Go back to step 3 until you have stored good high tier gear and have a good base. 
The mid game loop is focused on being able to start being competitive in PvP, and getting the ability to defend yourself and your base against the majority of attackers. When you start preparing to raid a base, this is when you start transitioning to the late game loop, which might function like this. First, spawn and go to your stored gear, then you get a good loadout, get the materials and gear required to successfully raid a base, whatever that entails, raid a base and recover what gear that you can, then you use the loot to improve your own base and get more high tier gear. Then you go back to step 3 in order to raid another base. When your own base eventually gets raided and cleared out, then you'd go back to the mid game loop. The main objective players will have throughout this 3 tier loop will be getting access to lots of better high tier gear and items that are stored and protected in a base. The rewards of pursuing this objective is the full arsenal the game has to offer, a gear advantage and boost to survival rate in PvP and PvE, access and protection to possible future features like vehicles, and the permanent ability to buy unlockable gear from the traders. This is basically the end game of Deadside, and because there are so many features still to come like vehicles, I can't say for sure this is how the game is going to function, especially the late game, but this is my best guess. This core gameplay loop is actually pretty similar to the one we have, but this one has no critical breaking points like the one we have currently. You will never run out of things to do, you can always raid a base, or work on your own base, and chances are you will eventually get raided yourself, which gives you reason to start the gameplay loop all over again. But I can't stress enough how important it is that these critical features be implemented in a way that not only solves the issues we have now in the current gameplay loop, but the gameplay loop of the future. Who would want a raid base if you have no more room in your storage to fit any more gear? And who would want to even bother making a base in the first place if raiding one is just too easy? Why bother grinding out more gear if everybody has the best gear in the game already because there are no gear sinks? Because the way the game is now, if you find a high tier gear item, it's never going to be sold because the only reason to have money is to get more high tier items that you already have, so why ever sell them? This is the challenge, working towards an engaging and fun core gameplay loop without any of the critical issues of the gameplay loop that we have now which does not keep the players engaged in the long run and might prevent the game from being successful overall. It seems the developers at Bad Pixel are more focused on adding actual content into the game at the moment instead of mechanics, like the ghillie suit, guns, map expansion, stuff like that. And that's fine, you do need content inside of the game for these mechanics to work around, but these really important mechanics do need to come soon. This is not going to happen overnight. This is a long development process, and it's going to require not only the developers to do their best work, but the community as well. I think some of the ideas that I propose in this video will make the game better, but I'm just a passionate player with some decent hours on a YouTube channel. And even if my ideas are a solution, I'm sure it's not the only one, or even the best one. One of the biggest things this channel does is provide information and ideas, and I hope that some of that can help improve the game and the community by one way or another. So, if you have any ideas, I would love to hear them. Please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like this sort of content and want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. When the next update finally comes out, I'll be redoing my armor and ballistics guide, making sure it's all up to date, including the new weapons and calibers. I also want to include bullet characteristics and deviation at range, because I feel like I really didn't cover that very well in my older video. And I'll definitely be uploading a lot more and more frequently after the update, because I have lots of video ideas planned, that I'm just waiting for more traffic and player count before I actually release them. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's all I have for now. See ya.